My respects to Father V.M. Thomas, Provincial Guwahati, and in charge of the education for all of South Asia. Father Godfrey D'Souza, Provincial of Mumbai. Father Ajoy Fernandez, uh, Vice Provincial of Mumbai. Father Maria Charles, in charge of Don Bosco Youth Animation. Father Crispino D'Souza, in charge of Education, Mumbai Province. All the assembled principals of Salation schools from all across the country. I believe there are 160 principals who have assembled today. All the young students, past students, teachers, faculty, administrators, ladies and gentlemen. I really don't know where to begin. It's, it's a joyous day. It's a very momentous day for me to be able to come back on this stage where many a times I have faltered, many a times I have succeeded. A stage uh, which not only brings back a lot of memories but also teaches me that while we can change some things in life, they will always be cosmetic, but the heart and soul of an institution will always remain the same. And for me, Don Bosco has provided me that heart and soul which will always be in my DNA, irrespective of where I go, where I reach. <laughs> we certainly didn't have these bright colors when I have performed on this stage. I remember this portion was not there. This is also an addition. Air conditioning certainly was not there. <laughs> but uh, the heart and soul of the institution was absolutely intact. 35 years ago when I left the school, and I have had occasion to come back to school many times, but my first occasion after 35 years to be standing here in the school auditorium. Thank you very much for this opportunity, Father. <laughs> While a lot of memories come back, uh, you think of all that happened during those reform, uh, the formative years of our life, one cannot but at the outset, remember the principles. And as we speak, I remember three principles who have played a very, very big role in my growing up and coming here. While I was in the primary school here, Father Gatti was there for a large part of the period that I was in the primary school. I don't know if any of you here have had any occasion not to interact or to meet with him. He was true blood, probably Irish, I think. Italian, okay. True blood Italian. Uh, quite nice and round and roly-poly. But one time, if you get his... <laughs> it, was, it was probably a pound of... Uh, uh, even a hammer could not do as much as that could. But what a discipline that, the, the early lessons of discipline that he set uh, for his students, the early grooming, the early teachings that I gained while I was in this, in this uh, building, the primary school, can never be forgotten. As I moved uh, into senior school, Father Boni was my principal. I, I'm, I was hoping to meet him today. No, he's not come. Uh, I've been in touch with him off and on uh, the last few years. In fact, I came to meet him also recently. And uh, I was just mentioning to Father Provincial in his office before I came here that there are certain individuals in your life whom you will never forget right through your life till your last days and certain individuals who play a very important role in making you what you are today. And I would place uh, Father Boni as the 
as one of those influencers, one of those academicians who actually is responsible for, being, for my being in this position or for my being here. Uh, it's not a very good story to share. It's not something I would be very proud of. But I would like to share and, and I would like to tell you how important a role each one of you plays at that critical juncture of a student's life when he's choosing the path which is right and wrong and how a good hand of blessing, a good guiding hand can make an impact on a person's life. Mr. Souza was the class teacher, I think, in my seventh standard. And uh, not Claire de Souza, was it Claire de Souza? I'm just, I'll, I'll get it back. And we had gone on a picnic to Mud Islands. And that's that phase where you're just turning naughty. I was, by and large, always a good student. The, my peers would complain that I was, a, I was not a part of most of the naughty stuff. And maybe I don't know why or how or what happened. It was one of those days in that picnic when we were, I think, super naughty. And uh, while we were playing, I think for the first time in my life, we played uh, American baseball over there. I, I still recollect that. Uh, but... But probably the young age, the adrenaline flowing when you're in seventh standard, just the joy of getting out of primary school into the big boys building. And a group of us did do something naughty. I won't get into that detail. I remember it exactly. <laughs> but it was an, a mistake which, which I think nobody could have forgiven. And uh, very rightly so, I should have been, I was pulled up, of course. And punishment could have been far more severe than what was finally meted out to me. I still remember standing outside the principal's room for, on the next day for hours where he made me just stand outside the room, uh, met me after many hours, of course scolded me first, gave me a piece of his mind. And he could have been, he was tough, I can, I, I still remember and I can assure you he was a tough principal. But he sent me back without rusticating me. And I, I think what I had done was enough to at least suspend me if not rusticate me. But he guided me, he held my hand, he blessed me, he told me where I was wrong, what I should have done. but let me go. And at that point of time, if he had not let me go, and if he had not pardoned me, I don't think I could have been standing here today. I would have gone down a different path possibly. Sometimes when you do something wrong, and you're not counseled, and you're not given an opportunity to reform, you can go completely haywire, you can go completely wrong for the rest of your life, go down a different path, and I shall forever be grateful to Father Boni. I shall forever remember him in my life, in my memories, as that one person who held my hand at that very, very crucial juncture and saved me from going down the wrong path. And I... I, I I would like to dedicate my being here today to that afternoon I, where Father Bonny held my hand. Of course, in your life, you come across many other instances. As you grow up, you learn a lot more. But I think at the age of 12, when somebody holds your hand and protects you, saves you, teaches you what is right, is something else altogether. I still remember the, the day I was performing in a, the fancy dress competitions and all of pri primary school, I'm not remembering so much, but I remember a dramatics competition where I was performing in a play and I completely messed up all the lines, completely. I don't think I said a single line right. And I think we were dressed up as, uh, as cowboys, probably, we had guns and some murder mystery, and I don't know what I did. 
we, were, we didn't even qualify for that uh, competition, thanks to me and my incompetence. <laughs> but then there were so many good things that we learned on the stage. Elocution, for instance. The ability to be able to talk in front of people. The debates that we've had on this very stage. The ability to handle Arnab Goswami probably started somewhere on this stage. Thank you. In fact, uh, more people would probably remember me because of Arnab than all the power that I can get into everybody's homes. And for that, I should be grateful also to that idiot box. I mean, not Arnab, the idiot box. <laughs> but certainly, the early days, the first few years of your life, when you are on stage, getting out of stage fright, the grooming that you receive in an institution as noble as Don Bosco, for which we shall all, all of us who have passed through the portals of this institution anywhere in the world, always remain eternally grateful to this institution, to Father Don Bosco, to, to the institution that all of you have created, nurtured with your sacrifices, sir. And I can assure you, each one of us who has come out of a Don Bosco institution will be a good citizen, will be a global citizen, will serve society, will leave back footprints which will make you proud, sir. I must acknowledge Don Bosco for a few things which have left an indelible mark also in my life. My secular groomings come out of my learnings and my schooling in Don Bosco. Twelve years in the school, not once, and I, I would like to acknowledge you, sir, for that, not once were we made or asked to compulsorily go to the church, which in my opinion is the best church I have visited in the whole of India. But not once I was asked to go compulsorily. I must have gone there a million times but voluntarily. We even played hide and seek and, uh, and we've even done the Count of Monte Cristo in and around the church and would go into the church and hide behind the uh, benches there. But never once was the school making anybody necessarily and compulsorily attend church, attend service. And in my, in my view, that was my first learning and grooming in true secularism. The school has never differentiated between communities, between caste and creed, religion, language. And today we are talking of compulsory corporate social responsibility. Today we are talking of making schools give 25% seats by compulsion to the less privileged. And something which I believe doesn't happen by compulsion. It should be in the heart. It should come from within. You can't ask somebody to donate by compulsion. You can't ask somebody to serve society by compulsion. But Don Bosco is that institution which I remember even 45, 46 years ago, which provided free education to children, which provided boarding facilities to children coming from the slums, coming from the backward regions, the underprivileged sections of society. And the beauty was, and something which I have learned for all my life and something which I am trying to propagate wherever I get an opportunity, that it's not a question of giving free seats. It's not a question of compulsion. It's not a question of percentages. It's a question of giving the same privileges, the same quality of education, to all sections of society, whether they pay for it or they get it free. The quality should be the same. The privileges should be the same. And that differentiation that has come over the years in Indian society and in our schooling system and probably in everything we do in different walks of life is probably the result of that early grooming which possibly many of us did not get who are not privileged enough to be students of Don Bosco, who are not privileged enough to see true social service, true equality in action day in and day out, as I have witnessed with the students of Don Bosco. 
I remember still, as even as we speak, that student, a student could be a billionaire or a millionaire, but there was never a differentiation between one or the other. I still remember a lot of uh, people telling my father and mother, why don't you shift to Napency Road or city? And they said, where will we get a school like Don Bosco over there? And we have had five children from my family study over here. My brother is a Don Bosco student. He, he was elder to me by nine years, so I think he finished his 12th just the year uh, when I was moving into senior, no, I was still in primary school when he finished his, in those days, 11th standard, not 12th, 11th standard. That was the SSE of those days. We moved into the 10th standard curriculum. So my brother, elder brother studied here, I studied here, my brother's son studied here, my elder sister's two children studied here. I never got an opportunity to have my children study here, which is truly unfortunate. But I can assure all parents whose children are studying here, in the past have studied or in the future will study, there is no institution like Don Bosco that I have come across in my life. The grooming, the quality of education, the commitment of the teachers, the passion in their teaching, the integrity of the management and school administration, it, it's a class apart. It's, it's a, in, as we say in Hindi, it's a misal. It's a, it's a demonstrative example of good governance. And I think if our nation can give us that kind of governance in politics, in administration, in the bureaucracy, which I have been witness to in this school, the nation will be a different place to live in, a place we'll all be far, far more proud of. We'll all be a far happier set of citizens if we could bring the same quality of governance that Don Bosco provides to the nation, to its politics, to its governance the kind of all-round development that this school provides to each one of us, the fact that I was a, a cub in, in primary school, then I became a Boy Scout as I went into senior school. The, the physical development, uh, I think Patel sir used to be my PT teacher. I don't know if any of you remember him. If he's around, I don't know. But Patel was my physical education teacher. The moral science lectures, something unique. I don't know if the school still has that. You do? I'm so happy to hear that. Most institutions have no concern, no commitment to moral science anymore. And I remember when the Christian students used to come to church, we had the moral science uh, period in, uh, in our classes. And it was such a dynamic engagement with the teacher that the early groomings at that tender age that the moral science class gave us will probably hold us in good stead all through our life. The Savio Club of which I was a member would, would engage us in different types of social activities and we, we've, I've always enjoyed Dandia Ras here. I've come here so many times uh, to enjoy Dandia Ras which the Alumni Association holds. And each of these different dimensions of a person's life are, I think, defined in those early formative years when in your early teens, in your, in your growing up, the years when you probably first learn adulthood, the lessons of adulthood. The delicate way the teachers held our hand took us through those years is something uh, which I'll always be grateful to all of you for, sir. I'll always be grateful to all the teachers. While I talk of teachers, I was just sharing with Father Provincial about an experience uh, in the 10th standard. He asked me, when did you get into politics? And I said, my mother always said that probably I was born into politics. I, I started politics even when I was a toddler. She does remind me sometimes that when I was three or four, I used to stand outside my house. I used to stay in Cyan, if any of you are familiar with Cyan, Gen Society in Cyan, just behind uh, SIES College. 
and she used to tell me that I used to stand outside the house with a Jansang flag, our party at that time, and ask every passerby, whom are you going to vote for? <laughs> and <laughs> we had a candidate here at that time, uh, Vasant Kumar Pandit, and I would say, I'm going to vote for Vasant Kumar Pandit. And then over the years, probably a little bit of the family background, but suddenly a passion I had developed very early in life. Uh, when I was in the 10th standard with uh, Miss Gemma was my class teacher. I don't know if any of you is in touch with Miss Gemma. My God, she was strict and how. She's a very, very strict disciplinarian. If I remember correctly, she taught us maths and a wonderful lady. She was no less than a mother to every one of us. But uh, I don't know if I should be sharing all of this. But we had a teacher who was not very good in teaching us geography. No, in teaching us history. We had an excellent father. Uh, uh, Lawrence Sir was teaching us geography and he was outstanding. I won't take the name of the history teacher and I request you not to go back into the records. <laughs> but uh, the history teacher was not very good. And uh, I remember we could teach her a thing or two about the history <laughs> books at that point of time. So I started a signature campaign in the 10th standard to give a memorandum to the principal and Brother Thomas was my principal at that time. And I was almost there, just about four students short from my class, I was almost there with the entire thing and she came to know and called me to the teacher's room. Well, I went there, I, she said, what, what have you been up to? I said, that looks, this is, this is not just done. Teacher doesn't know as much as we know and what is, what is she going to teach us? She said, what, is, what, is, what have you done? I took out that paper and showed it to her. I said, I want to give it to the principal. She said, tear it right now. Made me tear that paper, gave me a dressing down of my life. Sent me to meet Brother Thomas, who again was very, very accommodating, very adjusting, very, very f uh, much willing to listen and again take care of me rather than allow me to feel very slighted. He taught me that this was not the age and time to be doing these type of things. Uh, the matter rested there, but in a manner of speaking, it also did not rest there. We used to have our annual day those days at uh, Shanmukhanand Hall. And uh, after the SSC results were out, we were celebrating the annual day at uh, Shanmukhanand Hall. I was just sharing it with Father Provincial. And I was asking him whether the rules are still the same, and he tells me it's broadly the same. The best student of the year award goes to the topper of the school. And uh, every year it used to be to the boy who topped the school. And uh, after all these certificates, and we, we got our fair share of certificates, all the others, I stood second in the school. And I think that's something Don Bosco left me with. Whether it was the school result, whether it was my, I think, uh, second year BCom also, I was second, the final B BCom, I was probably second, yeah, final BCom also, second or third in the university. Law, I was second in the university. Chartered Accountancy, second All India, but everywhere second. Never went into the first slot. So maybe you didn't, uh, you left something there. But uh, I stood second in the school, so obviously there was no chance of getting the best student. So I was having batata vadas, and if any of you have been to Shanmukhanand Hall, they have the best batata vadas in the city. So we were in the canteen there, all of us having batata vadas. Suddenly a student a colleague came to me and said, your name is being called from the stage. And with all that I had done, and despite not standing first, Brother Thomas thought it fit to make me the best student of the year. Sorry. And 
that's where I got my lessons of where holistic development is so important. I asked him afterwards. I said, why, why, why did you change the rule of the game? And he said, we were looking for somebody who was not just the topper, but somebody who provided many dimensions and who we produced in Don Bosco as an all-round student, not just necessarily an academic topper. And in that respect, I think the quality of education today, the method of education, the way schools are running their schools and their institutions certainly needs an overhaul. It certainly needs to be revisited. The tremendous academic pressure that we are putting to our children of today, I see our children struggling through rote to get academic results where every mark counts. You are in competition to get 99.1 against 99.15%. All that we are looking at is, did our student get a 100% result? And this, in my opinion, is not going to be good for the country. I think the education which Don Posco gives with its huge playgrounds, the fact that we would struggle through our meal in five minutes so that we can reach the cricket pitch before somebody else reaches there. The fact that you had, you had large areas of oxygen to make you a man, make you a complete human being. The fact that physical education, moral education, social service, all of these ingredients of a holistic education were inculcated in us at that young age. I think that is true quality education. That is something which Don Bosco provides to every student who passes through this institution. And that is something for which I personally shall forever be grateful to you, sir, and to all the teachers, the principals, and all the creators of this wonderful institution. And I shall eternally be grateful for giving me those early groomings, those early training, whether it be in discipline, whether it be in compassion and empathy for the less privileged in society, whether it be the ability to earn money also. I mean, there was never any compromise on the quality of education. There was never any compromise on the standards of education. And I still remember that teachers were, were hardly being paid any decent salary. I still recollect that our fees used to be what? Five rupees, eight rupees, 12 rupees. A little bit of grant here and there, but certainly nothing compared to the quality of education that we were receiving here. And I believe, sir, you have, you have done this city proud, you have done our nation proud by continuing and maintaining the same standards of education. I know how many times I have to go through the angst of telling people that, look, I don't have any influence in Don Bosco. I cannot get you or your child in admission in the school. And being in public life, that's a big challenge. Every year you are faced with this challenge of admissions to uh, schools and colleges. But I know that for Don Bosco, it has always been merit. It has always been fairness. It has always been equal opportunity for all. And that is something I'm proud of this institution for. I'm, I'm a proud alumni. I hope I'll be able to succeed in my mission in life, in my calling in life. I hope I'll be able to deliver in the high expectations that people of India have in this government, in the leadership of Sri Narendra Modi. But I can assure you that I will not let this proud institution of Don Bosco down. And I hope I succeed in my mission with the blessings of father and fathers sitting here, with the blessings of my teachers, my principals. I was very sad to learn Brother Thomas passed away only a year and a half ago. My, my deepest condolences to all his colleagues, fond remembrances for Brother Thomas. And I'm sure 
with his noble soul he will be serving god wherever he is i i must say that i stand here before you today only to express my deepest gratitude for all that you have done for me and i can assure you i will always be there for our institution at any time i did not hesitate a minute when i was informed about this program and i am grateful to you sir for giving me this opportunity to be here amongst all of you to be in my old school my alma mater i'll take back fond memories of this afternoon as i leave from the school today and if i have your permission sir i would like to end with the prayer which i think today inspires me and i hold it in high regard and i think guides me in my work so if you don't mind may i request everybody to stand and we can say the prayer together our father in heaven holy be your name your kingdom come you will be done on earth as in heaven give us this day our daily bread as we forgive those who sin against us do not bring us to the test but deliver us from evil amen thank you very much thank you for this patience we will now release the souvenir at the hands of our honorable minister of state power and energy mr piyush goel the neck dbs has been possible thanks to our official sponsor trend setters our co-sponsors mastermind international ashish holidays future publishers and distributors CISB Technologies Private Limited our associate sponsors Navneet and Next Education yes a memento for the joys your presence brought come straight from our hearts to say thank you a lot and to do the honors we have with us our provincial No this is this is Don Bosco that you're going to take back you already have him in your heart you're Salesian true and true but this is a little token <laughs> <laughs>